protect yourself and your family from unexpected challenges. Consider accident only income protection. Click the link in the description to find out more. Boxing King Media in association with SaveMoreMoney.com. Uh, Eddie, what an atmosphere. Do you think this beat the last weigh-in that we did? Yeah, I can't even remember it now. I mean, it was only in May, but um, yeah, like I think, you know, um, been a lot happening in the city in the last 24 hours and uh, great to bring people together and just with a smile on their face, excited for a really big night for Irish sport tomorrow night. And I, I love the card, love the card from top to bottom. I think it's going to be such a brilliant night of boxing. And like I said, hopefully we can just create a night and an evening for people to enjoy and remember for a long time. And for Ireland, watching one of their greatest ever, you know, try to overturn the odds and become a two division undisputed champion. Yeah, well, I wanted to start off with that as well. We saw, you know, some crazy scenes yesterday and you know, condolences to the people affected. Um, you know, just word on that. And also, did you at any point feel like, you know, that may affect, you know, your show? Yeah, no, you always watch it. I mean, it's difficult coming to another country and, and not really understanding enough about the situation and, and you know the problems and just really following stuff on social media which is probably the worst thing you can ever do in life um, but also you know obviously concerns last night there's already a huge security presence in the show as there was last time um, and really from there just monitoring the situation no, no concerns about the event going ahead hopefully a peaceful day today and hopefully tomorrow night we can broadcast a sports event from Dublin where we can show how great these people are and how great the atmosphere is for one of their own. And uh, yeah, all systems go. You know, we've seen Katie, she's known for not doing a lot of media, but she specifically did hardly anything this week. Um, are you happy with that? Obviously from your side of things with regards to promotion and all that kind of stuff, this show probably didn't need selling. Yeah, we've, we've sold out. You know, you always want fighters to push the show as much as you can, but at the same time, I've got a lot of respect for Katie where, you know, you just, for what's on the line, you can't really tell her you got to do this and you got to do it. You know, last time she did, went above and beyond, and it definitely drained her. You know, someone said to me just now, she looked really tired in the first couple of rounds. She just for ten days was flat out. She did a seven-minute ring walk, and I don't want to take away from Chantel Cameron, who was amazing, but this time she will be different in this fight. Physically, she'll be different, but Chantel Cameron will be different. You know, she's someone that has grown in confidence. She looks so strong. She looks so assured. And the first fight was a really good fight. I honestly think this one's going to be a thriller. I hope so. Um, just a couple of other things before I let you go. Um, Conor Ben, you know, we spoke about it yesterday. But, you know, is there any potential names? Because obviously we ain't got a lot of time left for that date in Feb. Uh, if the Conor, uh, if the Eubank fight falls through, any names you could throw out there that are realistic? Jerome Boots Ennis is the one that Conor wants. I mean, it's probably the toughest fight in the division. But we will continue working on the Eubank fight. From our side, we're ready to go. But there will come a time in the next week where we need to move on. Um, and we need to have people positioned to do that. And one of the names Connor's asked for is, is Boots Ennis. I mean, like I said, it's, he's a world champion. It's a brutal fight, a really dangerous but exciting fight. And Connor just wants to fight the very best. So if it's not Eubank, it'll be a big name at welterweight. And we're lining them up just in case we don't get it over the line. But it's still absolutely our intention to do so. Are you able to say what the uh, biggest obstacle's been or close to it? Because obviously they were really previously agreed it. Yeah, Callas <laughs> dealing with it, you know, and sometimes negotiating with a Eubank is not the easiest thing to do. But I don't, if everybody just has some common sense, the payday is double what he could make anywhere else. He will think it's an easy fight. He's fighting a welterweight. What's the problem? Do you know what I mean? So, but sometimes it's a game of bluff and, and and I don't know what the situation is but Callas dealing with that as Chris Eubank's promoter and it's up to Callas and Chris Eubank if they can get the fight done. You mentioned Jaron Ennis there, you know, what's the situation with Showtime going out of boxing? Are these fighters free to fight and are they free to be signed as well? Yeah, I don't think any of them actually had contracts anyway with the PBC. So, you know, for us, all of those fighters are up for grabs. We haven't really started approach. We don't want to start adding fighters to the stable and having extra responsibilities for dates that we can't honour. 
Um, so for us, we just need to make sure that if we do offer a fighter um, an opportunity, we can deliver it. And Jerome Boots Ennis would be a fighter that would be an incredible catch because he's a great talent. You, you won't name anyone right now then from all the pool of fighters they've got that I mean, other than... I don't think they've got anyone. I mean, I'm not sure, you know, Wilder's not with PDC, PBC. Crawford's not with PBC, as I understand it. I think there's a rematch. I don't know the ins and outs of their fighter contract, but everyone seems to be floating around looking for opportunities. What do you think would happen with the Crawford Spence rematch, like with no broadcaster on the table? Well, I think there'll always be a broadcaster for it, but obviously I don't know the contractual situation. Is there a number in there that both guys should get and it becomes quite difficult? Is there a weight? I mean, when I saw Stephen Espinosa explaining the rematch calls, it all sounded very confusing. It's no weight in the rematch calls, but it's just got to be, everyone's just got to kind of be honest and with the weight. And it's like, no, it doesn't make sense. So a rematch call should stipulate the weight, it should stipulate the money, it should stipulate the time frame. And so I don't know, that all sounds a bit flaky. Um, but at the moment, they don't have a broadcast deal. I'm sure they'll get one. It's one thing having a broadcast deal, it's what are the rights fees and what is the broadcaster paying? You know, and without a big pot and a big fund, it's difficult to make a consistent schedule with great fights. And sticking to America, you know, you've already spoken about Alicia Baumgartner's situation. Uh, one, a big part of her defence is obviously the hair sample. Uh, obviously, I don't know what the costs are, but you know, if it was a case of all fighters just gave one hair sample once a year, would that be cheaper and more straightforward? I don't know enough about it, in all honesty. Um, I think hair samples will work only work in certain situations and over certain time frames. But again, I'm very limited on my knowledge of that. The most important thing we need is for commissions and governing bodies to step up and make decisions. Like, there's no point us spending all this money on testing if no one is prepared to do anything with the results. Us as a commercial organisation, we can't ban someone from a commission or from rankings or from a governing body. They have to do it. But it seems that every time they're provided with information, they just go, oh, blimey, don't really want to have to make a decision on this one. So someone's got to. Like I say, because otherwise it's just public domain. And, and that's why Michigan Commission, you know, they've been presented with the information from Alicia Baumgartner, the governing bodies, they have to make a ruling. Don't be afraid to make a ruling, otherwise what's the point? So that's all we ask for. Fighters have to have the opportunity to defend themselves. And when they've done that, there has to be a decision. And, and that's what we wait on. Uh, last couple of things, uh, John Fury has come out yesterday and obviously criticised Tyson's uh, style of fighting. Uh, obviously the other flip side is prior to Ngarno, we saw him get four knockouts back to back. Uh, what do you make of John's comments uh, based on you know what he, what he observes? Someone just told me that, strange comments. Um, I think Tyson's probably just lost a little bit of speed and reactions and you know, the way that he used to fight, which was very fidgety, jidgety, if that's even a word, and awkward and you know, reaction-based, probably can't do it anymore. He's, he's actually become a little bit more exciting, I think, as his career's gone on. I mean, you look at the third Wilder fight, it was a great fight to watch. Um, but I think he'll struggle to box that old style at his age now and, and, you know, with his ups and downs and, I don't know, a very good heavyweight, but, yeah, I wasn't quite sure about those comments. Last thing, uh, you know, we touched on it yesterday. You, you spoke about AJ, you know, getting bashed in the media. Um, but I've seen the same trend with Tyson. I've even seen it with Amir Khan as well over the years, how British fans, mainly online, will pick people up and throw them back down. Do you think fighters maybe just need to accept the criticism with the praise or should they take a stance uh, against uh, some of the, probably some, some of the stuff that he said is a bit uh, over the top? I think that when you dedicate your life to something, and you make so many sacrifices, and you give your all with a clean heart, it's difficult to be criticised. Because you feel like, why should I be criticised? I haven't done anything wrong. You know, I've tried so hard, I've made so many sacrifices, I'm in a really tough sport. But then you also realise that unfortunately, that's what the limelight, that's what entertainment, that's what the achievement comes with, the money as well. Like, if you're going to be making big money, you're going to have a big profile. If you've got a big profile, people are going to have opinions on you. If you've got a big profile, people are going to try and shoot you down. People are going to make up stories about you. People are going to try and finish you or, uh, you know, taint your credibility. But you can't really moan at the same time and say, oh, you know, because that's what comes with the territory. But the one thing I will say is none of these fighters ever started out with the intention to be a superstar and have loads of opinions and, you know... Like, they just wanted, they had a love for the sport and they wanted to be a champion. Unfortunately, 
there's something called tall poppy syndrome, which means that once you rise above everything and everybody else, people want to chop you back down again. And that's life, and that's something we do a lot in our country, in, the, in England. You know, being here now in Ireland, I don't think they do it as much over here, but maybe they don't have as much, um, you know, as many superstars, if you like. Um, but it's difficult when you look at people like AJ and you just think like, like, I don't think I've met a nicer bloke. Do you know what I mean? Like, and when he started, when boxing changed his life, he never signed up for walking out of his front door and 30 people taking photos of him and, you know, him not being able to have a sip of a coffee because he's taking a selfie here, a selfie here, a selfie. And then when he comes out, he reads on social media, someone's having a go at him or calling him something, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a difficult life to live for those guys. And I, th I always said that I don't think Fury will handles or will handle the criticism very well. And I think that's why you saw his, the way that he was in the Usyk press conference was a reaction to that criticism, which was, fuck you all. Do you know what I mean? I'm Tyson Fury. I've got loads of money. I'm handsome. I'm up, like, you know what I mean? And he's a great entertainer, but it was also a reaction to say, fuck you. And you can see them get frustrated, those guys. And, you know, it's just life. But it's sad, a little bit sad, really. It definitely, it definitely doesn't happen in Ireland from my Katie Taylor yeah. experience. But Absolutely. thank you for your time, Eddie. Have you ever been stranded on the side of a motorway with a broken down car? Like me, is that something that worries you? That's where Motor Breakdown Insurance comes in. If your vehicle breaks down, a trained professional will be sent out to get you back on the road. Or if this is not possible within the specified time frame to transport you to your home or to the nearest garage. 